you can actually add arguments to RPCs as well. So this can be simple arguments like an N32 or complex arguments like a pointer to an actor. So let's see what that would look like. So we can add an N32. or a complex arg, like an actor. So there's some subtleties with this. So instead of sending an actor, let's send something very specific, like this actor down here, which is the net owner test that we did in a previous video. So I take this actor here and make it as an argument to this RPC. So this is going to be a server RPC. So let's make sure we label it appropriately. So for the server RPC, we're going to send an actor that is on the client to the server to do stuff with. And so if I generate a body for that, we can go in here and we can print the actor's information. And so if you see this, that we're sending an actor pointer over the network, you might think it's just sending the address, but it is not. So this will be one address on your machine and it'll be a different address on the server machine. And then we'll, we'll go behind the scenes and figure out which actor you're referring to so that you can use it in the RPC. So to make that a little clearer, so we have one client and a server. That actor exists on the client's machine and it also exists on the server's machine. But these are completely separate machines. They have different memory and these pointers are to different addresses. So when we call an RPC from the client to the server, so a server RPC, and we provide it a actor as an argument, what will happen is it will send some information over to the server and the server will figure out what actor that was referring to. So if we passed this actor as an argument, the server would figure out, oh, you're referring to this actor. And when it calls the RPC, it will replace that argument with that actor. If we call it an RPC with this actor and went over the net, it would figure out what actor you were referring to and it would replace it with that actor before the RPC is called. And so we can test that. So to make testing easier, when we hit an actor, we'll call this RPC. So actor.h has a useful virtual called notify hit. So we'll just copy this virtual and override it in our class. And so I'll give that a body. Make sure to call a super. And so then we can call our RPC. Now, I only want to call the RPC on the client, so the server will actually bump into the actor too. We don't want to call the server RPC there, so we'll make sure that we're on the client. And so if we're on the client, and so if we're on the client, we'll just call our RPC. And so for the first argument, I'll just do some arbitrary number. And the second argument, let's make that the actor that we hit. So the actor we hit is the other actor, and we need to cast that to our specific type. So we should only call this RPC if we have an A net owner test. And so we'll cast that other actor to the actor we care about. And if the cast fails, then we just won't call the RPC. And before we send it, we'll just log it so that we can compare the addresses. So let's compile and test this. So in the case of the notify hit, we don't actually have the simple art. So let's get rid of that. Try compiling again. So I also need to remove the int from the print. So delete that int since there is no integer in our virtual for overriding notify hit. That was just a copy paste mistake from the server RPC. So now with these changes made, let's see if that compiles. Let's drop some breakpoints in our RPC and in our hit event so that we can see what's happening. So I have placed this test actor in the world. So all we have to do is play and walk into it and we should get that hit event. So if we walk over and I bump the actor, our virtual for notify hit has been called. And so if we step into this, we it looks like we are the client instead of the server. So this check should pass and it did. So we know what we ran into, so this cast should also work. And so we successfully cast it to net owner test. And we step over this to see what it printed. 
So the notify hit says the actor is the net owner test underscore C underscore two, and it has this address. So I'll copy that for later. And now we're going to call the server RPC, and so this should execute on the server. And as an argument, we should have sent over the wire that actor. So I continued, and we're having more hit events happen. So let's just continue until we get our server RPC. So now we are on the server, and we can inspect the argument. So the argument is 11, so that argument worked. And the actor is a populated pointer that is pointing to something valid. And so if we step over that, it should log the current actor's address and name. So to quickly compare those, I'll just paste them here. So you can see both actors have the same name, but the addresses are different between the server and the client. And so that is how arguments for RPCs work. There's a couple of caveats. For example, if you're freshly spawning an actor and that spawn hasn't happened on the client yet, so the server spawns an actor that will be created on the client at some point through the network spawning of actors. But if you call an RPC before that has made it to the client, then that RPC will not be able to find the actor because it isn't on the client yet, and perhaps the RPC got there first. So what will happen in that case, I believe, is the pointer would just be null. So you just have to watch out for things like that. But stuff placed in a level should load with the level and be fine with your RPCs. It's more of a dynamic spawning where you have to worry about that type of issue. So hope that helps.